Okay, welcome to Women in 10. I'm Shauna Dorsey here with my co-host. Janae Lynn. Great. And Women in 10, uh, for those who haven't listened before or seen this before, is a 10-minute podcast, 10 minutes max. We don't edit or anything like that. Uh, We're here to meet and talk to awesome women like our guest today. And you are. Hi, I'm Sasha Bershide. Thank you for being here with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, we're super excited to chat with you. We can Let's start with, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are sure. and what you're passionate about? What are you up to? Yeah. So um, my name is Sasha Bershide. I have lots of hats, but my favorite hat in this season right now is motherhood. I never thought I would say that ever in my entire life. So the fact that those are the words that are spewing out, like my inner everything is shouting for joy. Um, But I'm a founder of a 501c3 nonprofit called Project Intentional Inc. I am a proud full-time LinkedIn employee and um, I'm a wife to a husband who also owns his own company named Relax Pools. So, I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on, but right now my favorite role is mom. That's awesome. So tell us about your kids. Yeah. um, Kyan just turned five. Draco will be four in August. Kyan was born nine weeks early. Um, We spent 74 days in the NICU and it has just been like nothing like I had anticipated whatsoever. Motherhood has not there. It was very difficult. I would say the first three years um, I'm coming to terms with those chapters and and the first three years would be all lumped together. And that was just pure survival. And then the fourth year was feeling my feelings Mm -hmm. of all the trauma and all of the what I thought my life would have been. Kyan was later diagnosed with autism level three. Uh, What I thought my life was going to be, feeling those feelings of like, that's not the life. And then now I'm into um, celebrating the life that we have. Mm. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much to unpack there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Is there any tie there as to why you founded your nonprofit? Yeah, that's like the tie. So For the first four years of her life, I really struggled with um, just everything. You guys, like, we don't, I had no idea what I was signing myself up for. (laughs) Um, But it was December of 2019, right before COVID hit. And I have a 18-month-old baby in this arm, which is Cayenne with the undiagnosed uh, autism. And I have a uh, three month old here. I am, I have no idea that I'm PT or post traumatic. Um, no, what is it? Postpartum, oh, postpartum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. have no idea that I'm having postpartum. I'm hormonal. I'm like sleep deprived. I'm exhausted. I'm not myself. My husband asks me, what do you want for, for Christmas? And I just break down because mm-hmm. I am a full time, like I am a full time employee. I have incredible benefits. I have my mom. I have a nanny. I have people I can leave on. I have this incredible community and I still, can't do it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. how do single moms do this? How do single moms with children of special needs do this? How do they do it? Um, and so I went and I, I created a social media post and I just said, who, who's in Omaha? Who needs help? And I had 80 women respond and they wanted socks, mm-hmm. underwear, diapers. Huh. Talk about an exponential life, midlife crisis, like something needs to happen, something needs to be done. And so from that moment on, that's pretty much been it. Kyan's been the inspiration. She was the trigger. Um, But what it was, was nothing that I thought it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us how it's evolved. Intuition. Yeah. Just like what this is, what you guys are doing now. Mm Mm-hmm. And what's your, like, um, so what does the evolution look like of the Mm -hmm. nonprofit? Yeah, Mm -hmm. so this will be the fourth year. You guys, we're going to be in Baxter Arena on December 10th. We will be adopting 1,500. The primary demographic will be women in need, but we are not, and we never have turned anyone away. We've had grandpas come Mm -hmm. and shopping. but So we'll be adopting 1,500 families. The uh, estimate is about four persons per household. So we'll be roughly impacting 6,000 persons in need here in Omaha uh, directly. So my team is incredible. The team is outstanding. They hustle. I mean, every week we're getting asked to do stuff. And 
um, the way that I like to leave people is to let them know, like, this is just as much yours as it is mine. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't do this alone, nor do I want to. Right. Yeah. You are such a community builder. Like, uh, when I think of someone who really, it, like, can, it, like, putting a, a face to what community can look like in the heart that's in community. Um, I've seen that in your Facebook group, if you want to talk a little bit about that. But I see that through the nonprofit as well. Yeah. So this last year, I think community has transitioned into something that is needs to be redefined mm -hmm. by everyone. Um, this last year, community saved my life. Mm -hmm. I signed up to be on the board. I signed up to be on so many things I shouldn't have been. <laughs> I learned where my limits were, guys, yeah. and I learned how to say no. And awesome. that is one of the most beautiful but difficult things. Like, I learned boundaries hard. I learned how to say no. So last year, I signed up to be on, on a, the Omaha Mom Prom board. And... Um, was that one going? Community. Had I not signed up to be on the board, there was a night where I was my darkest. And had I not had that commitment and that little voice that said, you are, you know what you committed to, you go and do it. Don't sit here and have these thoughts. Like I knew what these thoughts, they've been there before, but I knew that this is not new terrain. We're not overpassing any new terrain and you're going to go and you're going to get into community. Mm -hmm. I'm sober. I will be nine years sober in July. And that's one of the most beautiful things that I like to share about being a sober person and having been an AA mm -hmm. is in AA, they say, find your community. This is your community. But then after you find your community, serve your community as human beings we have to find our community and within it you need to start servitude mm -hmm. you have to that's amazing and so you were talking about a facebook group that you started mm -hmm. i'm a fan of it but can you please tell us about it <laughs> you guys <laughs> <sighs> the, yes um so i started a facebook group a couple years ago with the primary purpose of number one no shit talking. And number two, you must be willing to empower and support other women. I'm a, a firm believer that my me was sent to be me. And no matter how many bananas or miles that you run, you can't be me. Yep. Like it's impossible, mm -hmm. nor should you want to be me. So like, there's never going to be competition between you and me. Exactly. Because I was sent to be me. Mm -hmm. And you were sent to be you. Yep. And that's like the biggest blessing that we receive. And so I started this group that was just like, guys, look, like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to clap for you. And you do it for her and do it for her and do it for her. And so now it's just this really cool uh, small community that is built up here in Omaha that just wants to um, support one another. But then the other great thing is like, if you don't agree, just move on mm -hmm. because there's no shit talking and there's enough space for us all to be here together and be successful. That's right. And what's the name of the group for those lit. who don't know? Lit. Lit Omaha. Yeah. Yeah. Lit that was a, wit. that was a fun what's brainchild. That? Yeah. <laughs> I said lit does wit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And speaking of lit, so I was um, on your group and found this um, tattoo artist. She has 24 seven. It's right in the Mastercraft. And so I got this tattoo there. It says get more done together, which is exactly what we're talking about today. It's brand new. So it'll look How cool more clear that? here soon. But yeah, just because of that connection to that group. Yeah. I love those stories. Yeah. I get those stories all the time. And I just sit there and I'm just like, God is so cool. Mm -hmm. Like God is so cool because like, that's not, none of this is me. This is all God. And this is just me taking a step back and just using my intuition and just saying like, God, how can I do what you need me to do to just be the vessel? And like, just by <laughs> me running and create, like now you have a tattoo on you. I know. Right. In this building. In this right. building. It's amazing. It I is. love it. Like no, I, um, I love and I value, I cherish our community. I think Omaha, this is one thing that did come to me this last year that uh, I will be saying over and over and over again. I think that in order 
for us to heal America, we have to really focus on healing like our organs. Mm -hmm. And the best way to heal our organs is to focus on like the heartland and, and where are we planted? We're literally planted in the heart of America. And I really strongly believe that if we take up and we take charge to heal our very heart, we don't need to go on mission trips when our city is the mission. Mm. Mm. we can literally change America because people are going to come to us and they'll be like, hey, what are you guys doing? We're just supporting one another. Right, that's right. We're just loving and giving each other well grace done. and like allowing space for your you yes. to be you, to be successful. And same with my me. Exactly. Well stated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for being yes. here. Yeah. Amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You. This went super fast. Yeah, I All know. Right. <laughs>